Welcome back into the channel. I'm Hande Grigg, and today we're going to be discussing everything to do with the NFL draft. So now that the season's just finished, there's not much else to look forward to apart from the draft, which is happening at the end of April. Uh, we're going to be discussing all sorts of ins and outs, you know, what is it, how does it work, who's involved, uh, etc. So please stick around for that if you have any of these kind of questions. If you want to enjoy the video and learn something new, make sure to like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate the support, guys. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about is college players. So the whole essence of the draft is that NFL teams, professional teams, are picking the best players out of college. So it's not the only route into the NFL. There are the international player programs and other different things like that. But the main way that probably 99% of players go into the NFL is by playing football at college. Players obviously play college football on Saturdays is the big day and then NFL games are on Sundays. There's a lot of opportunity to have games televised. College matches are actually attended up to something like 100,000. I think it's seven of the top 10 uh, largest stadiums in the world are all college football stadiums which is literally crazy I can't believe there's that much of an appetite for college football but over there it's a big big deal uh, televising games you have scouts coaches pundits everyone's there uh, making a big deal out of it because a lot of these players could go on to be the next best thing in the NFL so a lot of people invest in that take notice of a lot of players and there's lots and lots of different colleges and universities out there so some of them actually go to, you know, the god end of Nebraska or somewhere to go and watch uh, colleges play just to try and find someone who's going to be beneficial in the NFL. It's really interesting. They invest a lot of time and money um, and effort into making college programs really, really impressive. And there's obviously a select few schools that tend to get players that get drafted near the top because they are very, very good school programs and tend to win national championships as well. Because there's so many colleges and so many college players, they actually have an invite to a thing called a combine where they do workouts, they do uh, weights and do physical training and tests to see how fast you can run 40 yards, um, how high you can do a vertical jump and things like that. So there's lots of different things there to kind of quantify your skill set and maybe uh, increase uh, the interest in you from, for the draft if you're from a smaller school or if you are particularly athletic and not the best player in the world teams may take you higher and try and work on your skills later on. So it's a really interesting way. You can see a lot of people rise and fall if they participate in the combine. And it's just really good to see some of the best players in college football and see how they can obviously progress or how they might fit into certain teams if they're particularly good at one thing or another. So it's another really good insight before the draft uh, on some of the best college prospects. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of the NFL draft. So all 32 teams have to participate and the order of the draft is decided by the record from the previous season. So in the 2020 season that's just finished, the Jacksonville Jaguars won one game and lost 15, which was the worst record in the NFL, and therefore they're going to pick first. And then the Jets won two games, lost 14, so they had the second worst record and they're going to pick at number two, uh, and so on and so forth. So the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl and they'll be picking at 32nd. You get the picture. And then there's uh, 32 picks per round, there are seven rounds as well, so plenty of picks. And then there's a couple of compensatory picks for uh, different things um, along the way. So it kind of adds up to around 240, just over 240 picks. Um, so plenty of action going on. It's spread over three different days. So the first day is typically a Thursday and they do it in the evening. And it's, it's exclusively the first round. So it's just the first 32 picks. The second day is the Friday where they have rounds two and three. So you get all the way up to pick 96. Uh, and then Saturday is rounds four, five, six, and seven, where you get all the later round picks. It lasts pretty much all day. You get to see the film of them in their house, celebrating with their family, and uh, enjoying what is probably the best day of their lives. This is also not a set order. I know I said that they pick one through 32, but teams can trade up, trade down, they can trade players, they can trade picks this year, picks next year, picks the year after even. So there's plenty of shifting and changing. Um, there hasn't been a first round sort of swap for quite a while. I don't think there was one last year. Um, but definitely some of the later rounds, if, if teams are desperate to take players, they sometimes trade up uh, to ensure that they can pick that player. So it does happen every now and again, more often than not in the later rounds though. Um, but the first round is definitely the most exciting on Thursday night. Draft day is very, very exciting. They pack out an arena, a venue um, with lots and lots of fans, pundits, media, etc. so that everyone can get the action first hand. 
there's always a stage where Roger Goodell, who's the league commissioner, uh, announces all of the picks and announces when teams are on the clock. So, for example, he'll go up and say, Welcome to the 2021 NFL Draft. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, now are, you are now on the clock, and then the clock will start. In the first round, you have 10 minutes to make your pick. In the second and third rounds, you have seven minutes to make your pick. Five minutes in rounds four through six. Then in the seventh round, you only have four minutes to make your pick. So it is quite time constrained and a bit difficult to make picks quickly. Really puts a constraint on the team's ability to communicate effectively and to make a decision very quickly on who they want to take. There's obviously a lot of options in the first round, so they get a bit of, a bit more time. And there's also options for trade-ups and things like that. So that extra time really gives them the opportunity to think about the decision and makes it really exciting. And a lot of the first round picks tend to come up on the stage, they shake Roger Goodell's hand and they are presented with a jersey of the team have selected them. So it's also a great kind of event, obviously. They're there in suits with their family or their agents and so it's quite a big deal. And everyone seems to hate Roger Goodell, he gets booed all the time. Um, it's been called the No Fun League as, as the NFL um, and things like that. So it's actually a really good atmosphere. It's great to watch usually. I know with Covid they've had to make it a virtual one. Um, so he gets a lot less hate and so it's a little bit different but I think it's really really good atmosphere so it's great to watch as well people really really get uh, animated about who their team picks and you know booing when they don't pick the player they wanted and stuff like that so it's quite funny uh, to see everyone get so rattled as well. So booms and busts of draft day it's really exciting to obviously see who goes in the first round and who goes towards the top two specific teams and there's always a lots and lots of speculation about who's going to be the best player and who's going to be the next Tom Brady if they were picked in the later round potentially. So it's really interesting to see because a lot of first round picks tend to not be that amazing. Uh, a lot of them were picked at second, third, tenth, twelfth overall and they seem to go on to have a very mediocre career as a backup and they bounce around lots of different teams and then other guys like Tom Brady as I mentioned, uh, he was selected 199th overall so he did not go very early, he was not a big prospect, he wasn't at a top school etc. So he really exceeded expectations and there's lots of players who do that. Some even go undrafted and then they become regulars in the league and ball out and they do their best to make sure that they stay on the team and get a long term contract and get paid. So. It's just interesting to see who you think might be the next uh, next best thing and who might actually be a complete bust and fall out of the league in the next couple of years. So it's really, really intriguing to see and really rewarding to see some of those later round picks come on to develop and, and go into something special as well. So when is draft day in 2021? Thursday the 29th of April through to Saturday the 1st of May is when it is scheduled this year. It's set to be hosted in Cleveland, Ohio. Fingers crossed it's not on too late. I know sometimes the coverage goes on pretty late for the first couple of rounds and they obviously drag it out because it's the evening in the US. But fingers crossed you guys get to see it. It was on Sky Sports last year. I managed to watch it through that. So hopefully you guys can find a way of watching it. It may be on the YouTube channel as well for the NFL. So there's definitely a few channels to watch it. But it's really, really exciting. Really intriguing to see who your team picks as well. So I would definitely catch it if you can. If you're going to be watching the draft for the first time this year, it is going to be a little bit confusing to start with, but there's lots of punditry, lots of talk going on to start with, so that should hopefully get you up to speed. And watching people people's reactions to the picks is probably the best bit anyway, so definitely look out for those things. If you have a particular prospect that you really want your team to take, then let me know who that is in the comments down below. I'll be sure to put a couple of my predictions down there for the Bills, and uh, hopefully we can get the players that we want as well. Uh, if you went on to enjoy the video and learn something new about how the draft is done, then please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll get some more content out soon. See you in the next one.